The most important question is how do you pronounce it? Because I keep going Levin, Levin, Levin. The correct pronunciation is Levin. Dutch for life and to live. Okay, Levin. We are on board of 1190, and we are with Wit. Yes. Who Witt. is marketing director for Yacht Creators. Okay, great. So we're gonna check this out. Take it away. This boat was designed for a large yachting family, multi generational. So the kids obviously want to play, you know, in the water. So here we have plenty of storage we for step in? everything you can imagine. Please do. Okay. Okay, so this is basically the toy area of the boat. Everybody's dream <laughs> to be able to have all of this. One, two, three. Um, so I guess all their, um, the fun part, which all the boys like, is behind, like right in front of me, behind Rico. MTU engines. Okay. These are massive diesel engines, 1900 horsepower each. Wow, that's a lot of room. It's beautiful. The, the deck is really beautiful. It's actually three decks yep. in one. You've got the yep. sports deck, and then here you have what we call the lanai, mm -hmm. and this is the dining deck. Very cool, what's that? That is an iPhone charger. It is an iPhone charger. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. It's gonna light up now, oh boy. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Innovation. Okay, so that brings us actually to um, my question. Tell us what this makes this boat very special. What caught my eye was that you guys are basically saying this is a perfect boat for the Exumas, exactly. for the Bahamas, for the shallow waters. Exumas is my most favorite place on earth. So imagine. just do, um, do tell us what makes this boat so special. What makes this boat so special is the purpose. Her purpose is to connect large yachting families who enjoy the outdoors, that enjoy active lifestyles with nature. And as you can see right here, this is a, a covered space, but it's also very open mm -hmm. to the elements. And we go on board the salon, you'll see that you, know, you can open the front windshield and you can have cool Bahamian breezes blowing unobstructed all the way from the very front awesome. of the boat all the way to the back. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's like one level, two level, three level, like multi-level. The view is probably amazing from here. I'm just imagining me in the Exumas right now. <laughs> and imagine if you're a family and you're the mom or their dad and you want to keep tabs on where the kids are. When you're standing in the galley, you have a, again, an unobstructed line of sight all the way from the galley back all to the, the sports deck. Yeah, that's <laughs> just awesome. Just to make sure. Very cool. Nice al fresco dining, um, wet point, bar. You've got almost a nine foot super, ceiling. So I'm tall. Super I'm tall. six foot three, and I can't even reach the ceiling. It's unusually tall. It's really awesome. It feels like uh, you're on a super yacht. Exactly. Which well, is you are. what? Yeah. Which is you are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wet bar. Yep. You got bars. Bar. Freezers. Refrigerators. Got it. Okay. Great. Let's keep going. I'm following you. See the window. Oh, that's great. That's always that's always such a drag when you have this beautiful breeze blowing and you don't get it in the back. So that's amazing. So you can just open it up and we call this area a great room at sea. 
Almost like so the same tall. philosophy as like a like a luxury beach home. It's so tall. It's You've just got, unusually tall. Again, eight foot ceilings. Mm -hmm. There are no bulkheads that are blocking any of the views. Everything mm -hmm. is wide open. You've got beautiful large windows on either side. And as I told you before, this front windshield comes down, slides out, and you get the breeze all the way mm -hmm. through. Let's check this out. Check out the galley. Oh, it's so much room. This is this is really awesome. So it just lowers all the way down. It's amazing. Yeah, and uh, just imagine, you know, a large family here, dining, socializing. This is really, truly I really the like the tier design. I mean, like you yeah. said, from here, I could actually see what's going on pretty much in the water. All the way down to the sports deck. It's very cool. And you got a chef's table galley here. Awesome. You know everybody's going to end up here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know? refrigerator and freezer drawers. Wow, okay. Six. That's a great amount. Wine storage, you know, cooktops, tons of storage for your dishes, for your cutlery, trash compactor, everything that you need. Yeah, I mean this right is here. such a workable space. And then a massive amount yeah. of counter space. Massive That's amount of storage. Okay. Like you, a lot of the times I hear that people say sometimes they prefer kind of a, a galley that's got an upper storage, but this is so much storage, you guys. I don't even know what you would do with it. Like, I don't know, I would do with it. I'm not even used to such a big kitchen anymore. <laughs> so this galley is a, is a great size, nice yeah. size sink. Awesome, all right, let's see. Uh, okay, I'll take you upstairs. Up, okay, we'll go up first. Fly bridge, sun deck. Uh -huh. I mean, you can, you can tell this is the perfect space for a large, awesome. multi-generational family. Oh, it's so tall. You could have, you know, the captain or even, you know, one of the owners uh, steering. You can have the kids or the grandparents here. This, uh, the couch areas that intentionally kind of wrap around, mm -hmm. kind of create this conversation piece here in the front. You have a full bar, of mm -hmm. course, and then again, much, much, much more seating area, more conversations. That's a lot of room. It's covered, but at the same time, it's open. Right. It's, it's, it's a bit of a blanket canvas, so you can kind of set it up whichever way you want, move the furniture around. I like that it's movable, so it's Bingo. awesome. Yeah. Yep. It's really great. None of the furniture With loungers is if fixed, you want to, yeah. So this can all come out. I, you have many different arrangements. I really like that. That's a trend now, and I really enjoy that. I think that's really great when you can just move, you know, move it around. You can mm -hmm. replace it. It's a lot easier, you know, just change cushions. You can really change the furniture and yeah, makes it feel like a house, which is, you know, house in the water is what we want. Now, what you can't see is on top of this hard top, the entire roof is all solar panels. So that energy is drawing in from the sun and it's feeding the battery bank down mm -hmm. below. So the intention was the family wants to be able to dock in the Exumas mm -hmm. at night, you know, have everything turned off, the windows open, you know, enjoying the breeze and no noise, just silent. Got it. Just truly, truly connected with nature. So no fuel is being burned for up to 10 hours. Got it. So, and that's um, air. So how many staterooms? There's four. Four staterooms. Okay, which we're gonna see. Um, and the so the air conditioning, like, and all four staterooms could run. Correct. Overnight. Yeah. Oh, this is like <laughs> this has been a dream for so long, and it's starting to happen, you guys. It's that's peaceful, awesome. It's zen. And at the same time, it's eco-friendly as well. And also, I was reading that the draft on this boat is really shallow. It's. It's like the, just under. It's four feet of. Only four and a half four feet, and a half feet, which is the which class is ridic leading draft ridiculously, for her ridiculously size. little. And that's by virtue of the technology, the design, you know, that keeps the draft just 
incredibly, incredibly shallow so they can have that access that they need to these you know, exotic destinations within the Zumas, the Abacos, etc. I mean, once we go to a 90-foot yacht, um, which, you know, the shallow draft would be the, um, would be a catamaran, um, the draft on that catamaran is going to be more than that. So that just kind of puts it in perspective. Just because it's a 90-foot cat, you get a little bit deeper. And so I think that's, that's amazing. To be able to have a 90-foot yacht being really in the special. really shallow waters of Exumas is amazing. You see our initial advertising that we did. It's an overhead shot of... Yeah, I was like, is this photoshopped? I saw that. <laughs> The boat is incredibly close so to the beach. So close to the beach. And that's such a powerful yeah. statement. That so that's that's a real picture. That's not a Photoshop photo. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's great. Where's the tender Where's the tender going? You could either put the tender in the garage or you can keep her on the, the sports deck area. Yeah, um, on, the, can also, on the swim step, right? That looked like it. We can check out the cabins. Yeah, we'd love to I see that. I can also show you the crew quarters Yes, as that well. sounds great. Okay. Yeah, we'd love to see everything you can show us. I think right now we're, we are the world record breaker probably for the um, the draft that we have on this boat for Correct. the size range. And many feet, we're only at 1.4 meters, which is about four and a half feet. Yes, how um, is that accomplished? <laughs> this <Hi>. is Baron. <laughs> I am Baron Cardenas, I'm the CEO of Yacht Creators, also the co-founder of 11 Yachts. We uh, build uh, amazing, cool, innovative, and interesting books. Cool. With a purpose. Many feet, we're only at 1.4 meters, which is about four and a half feet. Yes, how is that um, accomplished? We accomplish that by actually using um, the, what one, a very lightweight construction for the size of boat that we are. We're still 200,000 pounds, so it's a proper boat. Yes. Very well built, feels, properly. Feels you know, very solid. Yeah, it's a blue water hull, for sure. Okay. Uh, we built the arena pleasure class, so the made us do even more than the average 90 footer, I think. Most of them are gonna be C rating or something like mm -hmm. this, or ABC wide. We actually went above and beyond because we wanted to build like we built our other boats. So we built into the same class as the other boats. So once we got past all that, then we had to figure out how to make the boat lighter. Mm -hmm. So we started with the, with the slide hull, which is Repack Design, Repack Naval Architects out of Holland. They built this amazing, um, amazing riding boat um, that offers a really wide chine. Right? So these wide chines give it a lot of stability, but they also give it a little more draft. And they allow us, more importantly, not a little more draft, more uh, buoyancy. Yes, less, less draft. Uh, less yeah. draft. Because <laughs> that would defeat the purpose. The beer is working. No. Um, no, what it allows us, it allows us to actually add more weight okay. to the boat without necessarily increasing the draft. Got it. Which I think is the biggest key. So everybody, you know, they want to make a lighter boat, so they automatically lighten stuff up or do less stuff on the boat. But the reality is that our clients want to do everything. Correct. I want to go fast and I want to go efficient and I want to go far and I want to do it quiet. So how stable is it with four and a half foot drop? Comfortable. Extremely comfortable for a few reasons though. Before I get to that though, mm -hmm. how we got to that um, to that draft yes. is that we ended up going with Voigt linear uh, jets. We're the first boat in the world to actually use the Voigt linear jets. Okay. We actually we're up for uh, several awards with them for this So it's technology. a jet. So no, it's not a jet. It's so not it a sounds jet. like a jet because they thought it was a cool name. But actually, I think what it did is basically it's a nozzle okay. that goes around the regular size propeller. So a regular propeller will sit inside of the uh, a tunnel on the back of a boat whenever they're trying to make the boat less shallow, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or less, less, uh, more shallow. More shallow. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going back. Let's drop. I told you the beer will catch up. <laughs> no. You're going to sweat him out. It's so hot. Are you kidding? It's just so warm. It's so hot. So what we ended up doing is we created this massive tunnel that both you and I would fit inside of. Right? Okay. An idea. We'll be wow. sitting inside and we'll be sitting inside this tunnel. Yeah. And the tunnel goes into the actual boat. Normally when you do that, that's going to create all kinds of buoyancy issues on the boat. So balancing the weight has to be very, very well defined hmm. from the beginning. The slide hole allowed us to play with some of that. Repack was really, really good on this. From the beginning, we worked hand in hand with Boyd to create that for our first package. But normally they do it on commercial boats, much bigger boats, right? So what it is, is the Boyd linear jet is basically a propeller okay. sitting out of a nozzle. The nozzle actually starts wide where the propeller is at, mm -hmm. brings water into it, as much water as it possibly can, and then tapers in so that it creates kind of like a jet stream. Okay. Much like um, the side of a uh, turbine uh, engine Get it. on a plane. Okay. Right? Yep. So it comes at the back. When it comes at the back, though, it has a strake, a fixed strake. Propeller spins, they both spin the same way. The one in the back actually is fixed, and that's the one that changes direction for everything. 
Hmm. It breaks up the water, which means no cavitation. It means a really smooth um, um, exit at the back of the boat. And they're basically like two powerful engines going on the back of the boat. Got it. Straight out. That's the reason why we have the tunnel. It has to go all the way up. It doesn't push down, it pushes up. Got it. So when it pushes out, it basically means that we have a really beautiful thrust. It means that we have a uh, four and a half foot draft. It means that we also have to be really, really careful with the way that we um, distribute balance the our boat, distribute mm -hmm. the weight throughout. But it's also protecting the, the actual propeller. So when you go into a beach or something, mm -hmm. not only are you shallow, but you're protected. So you can't always see what's beneath the water. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little coral comes up or yep. a rock or something like that. The propellers are going to be able to um, be protected completely inside this nozzle. You draw, you run great, you run smooth, you're um, efficient. And uh, you're, you're confident. So that was the biggest key. We want right. to be able to go. So how, how fast is the confident. boat? 28 knots is the maximum speed that maximum. we reach. I'm like cruising? Well, yeah. Wow. Well, cruising actually is still pretty impressive because the way that the boat runs and the way that it, um, that it um, bounces out, it's, this, this is actually something interesting for us. The, um, the VLJs, the Voight Linear Jet, mm -hmm. will allow us to cruise between 20 and 24 knots without changing our uh, range. Wow. So it's 500 nautical miles at 20, okay. 21, 22, 23, 24. It just really depends on where you want to be with the uh, sea conditions. So how comfortable do you want to be? Right. So the sea is allowing you to go faster, go faster. If, if it means that you go slower, mm -hmm. you go slower. But the nautical mile range, how far you can go, which is really what matters. Interesting. Yeah, it's not going to change. So you burn a little bit more as you go a little bit faster. But you're going faster, yeah. so it offsets right. that all day. Right, correct. So it's really, Yeah, really that makes cool. sense. At cruise, what, we're actually, yeah, what do you burn at cruising? At cruise, we're actually burning about 140 gallons total. At uh, wide open throttle at 28 knots, we're actually 465 nautical miles, and we're burning about uh, 165, 170 gallons total. Oh, okay, well, not bad Which compared still, to, to the cruising. What would be um, the most fuel efficient speed? Um, what, what do you burn at that? The most fuel efficient uh, cruise speed, I think, right now, again, yeah. is between Really doesn't really matter. Like I mentioned, between 20 and 24 knots, let's call it 23. But 22. like, as you burn, what because, would... Because you're you're burning, but you're going faster. Well, yeah, of so course. So it offsets it. So it sets, it's different than the usual boat. Normally in a boat, whenever we're doing our, our charge... Well, because it goes up like that. Right. One goes up like this, the other one goes like this, yeah. and you try to figure out where you actually meet up the most. Right. This particular one kind of goes congruent next to each other. Interesting. And then it doesn't actually um, change very much. We're efficient up to like 30 knots. Above you beyond 30 knots, the most efficient Propulsion might be something else. Below 20 knots, maybe a regular propeller, mm -hmm. a big deep propeller. Of course, the draft changes. You know, so but for what our intended purpose was to be, which is what we do, we design for a purpose. We don't design for style. Right. And then we make it look beautiful. You know, um, if we design for purpose, we built the most perfect boat that we could possibly have built for the exhibits. Okay. Dream place. Do we have any other um, spec? questions that we want to ask while well, we have the Max spec guy. Maximum <laughs> range, for example, but the most maximum range. It's can get 2, 2,000 nautical miles, but nobody's going to do that because yeah. they're basically dropping down to like 12 knots. You know what I mean? Hey, there are people that, we do 12 we nautical. 12 knots comfortably. Hey, if you're in the Bahamas, 12 nautical miles yeah, is but beautiful. Like, but that, you have eight feet coming in the goal, yeah. like in, in the stream, like I don't want to do 22, 24, 26. No, but you would you would speed up a little bit. My point is that majority of people know that at, at, that that speed you're gonna have almost yeah. every single boat out there will have two thousand nautical miles out of it. Yeah. yeah. Almost every single boat out there. You know, so I always think of like kind of like a bullshit number. You no, know? I mean it's it's, it's so a legit number. The performance number is already. Correct. The performance yeah, really number is really where you come into play. Yeah. Because you just said where I mean that's one ninety foot boat is absolutely incredible. That's real real boat too. Ninety one yeah. feet, two hundred thousand pounds mm -hmm. proper. And by the way, when we built it. We came in under 2,000, 2,000 pounds under the initial architecture weight. Wow. Usually it's the opposite. Yeah. Which that's I want to say is like, kind of like a big deal. Yeah, it is very <laughs> impressive. And what's the. Um, Sorry, the, the. I didn't do anything. Um, <laughs> the solar. I'm doing a self cleanse. The, the solar panels, what is. Um, 6KW. 6, okay. Everything on the boat runs like a Tesla. Mm -hmm. So on a Tesla, you actually have a battery bank that actually runs everything on the boat, I mean, okay. the car. So uh, electronics, stereo, air conditioning, etc. On this boat, everything runs on 20 lithium-ion batteries. Okay. We have 100 kW of uh, batteries that run absolutely everything on the boat. Air conditioning, uh, lights, they run appliances, they run 
um, anything on, that, that we're using on the board, ACDC power, mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether it's 120, 240, etc. Okay. What that means is you always have clean power. Okay. okay? Yes. You always have constant power. You always have power that you can depend on. What do we do? We created five or six different sources to charge those batteries so that we always have pattern, uh, batteries available to us. We have solar panels. The entire roof is completely made out of solar panels that you can walk on, you can wash, you can use, you can, I mean, they're really wow. serious, proper uh, solar panels. Um, it's actually giving us 6KW at all times, including right now during the show. Okay. So while everybody else is having maybe some power issues, because the boat shows aren't always the most constant of uh, powers, wow. we're yep. running steady. You can see it right now, you're feeling the air conditioning, never a flicker of the lights. It's always just constant and clean power. Um, then you actually have the generators. Then you have your batteries, I mean your, um, your alternators Alters. off of the engines, mm -hmm. you know, and then of course you have short power. So you have all these Options, streams right. coming in at all times. One goes down, two goes down, three goes down, four can go down, and you still have an uninterrupted and beautiful experience. Question for you. Um, so with solar panels, I feel like all I keep hearing is that they need a little room to breathe. That if you know if they're completely built in, that they're not they're not cooling enough, and that's where you lose the most efficiency. Holy smokes! You actually know about this. So, so yeah, do do we address actually, that. that. I've never in my life ex expected that anybody would ask me this, but that is the most not nerdiest that broad, of all no. the nerdiest questions I've been asked all year. Because that's what I like. I like when it's built in and it's beautiful, but so, I keep hearing this like pushback. Well, they kind of need to be elevated and they need to have this room. Well, now I feel like it's okay. All right, All right, there you go. So we actually did something about this. Okay. So not only that, but also the transfer of heat going from the from the uh, hard top and down into the uh, mm -hmm. into the cabins. I mean, to the um, to the heads of people when they're walking around upstairs. Okay. So if you see back here, we have these massive ceilings, right? Three and a half meters back there. Two and a half meters in here, even all the way, 2.2 all the way on this side. Mm -hmm. That is giving you a beautiful experience, but it's also drawing all the heat up. Right. So it's making you feel more comfortable, right? So on this deck, when we lower that windshield, which is the, I think the only board in the world that does that in this size. It's really cool. And then you open up these doors all the way and you're at anchor, the wind will blow all the way through. So you can turn off your, jet, your air conditioning up here, mm -hmm. run it down below, and the batteries will run the boat maybe about eight, 10 hours straight. Okay. okay? That sounded beautiful, really, truly enjoyable board, uh, boating experience. So going back to your roof and the solar panels, yeah. we wanted to have the same thing, but if you go too high on the um, on the hard top, then it becomes a little clunky and a little weird looking, right? So we have to keep some kind of structure, you know? Of and, course. And, and keep the, and uh, style the and looks design. of it and the yeah. design. So we actually did a full um, insulation package on the hard top. Oh. So the entire hardtop is actually insulated to absorb heat, dissipate the heat out. Huh. And then when you're walking underneath the hardtop, you'll probably notice that it feels very fresh. So that does work. You yes. could do that. We're using the polyurethane um, insulation up there. We're using it on this deck as well. So if you pull any of these panels down, they're going to be fully insulated. So all the heat is not being transferred down. It's wow. being absorbed. And it makes so much sense. Taken out. Innovation, you guys. It's just innovation. I never knew in my... Like, of all the things that we did... Pat me on the shoulder. I'm impressed Gold that Gold anybody Gold actually Gold. cared. Thank you for all the info. Really appreciate it. Okay, we're going to go Wait, see below the deck. Oh, oh no. Okay. Sure. Rough, rough price, well equipped like this boat. Fully well equipped. The, uh, well, actually, we, I think that every boat should be fully well equipped. <laughs> You know, so everybody wants to give you a range. A rough the reality number. Is, I never bought a boat where I didn't, or a car, or something where I didn't say I want everything included. So the reality is, I'm always going to want the highest battery thing and everything else available. So if you max this boat out and everything that we did right now, we're a million, nine million seven, uh, just under. Okay. Nine million six fifty. That's actually the full boat that you see right now. Landed in the U.S. U.S. duties. Oh, okay. I mean, the coffee right. maker, literally. Oh, okay. Just turn key, enjoy the so boat. This boat is away. US spec or we did a US, US spec. spec. We actually bought the appliances here, we sent them over there. Love All it. All everything that you see on the boat can be replaced in the US. Love it. And I had a, a customization question. How how much of uh, you know semi custom is it? Is it pretty set or is it, you know, semi custom in terms of interior? I think that's a beautiful question. Everybody always asks about semi custom, right? And I've actually designed a lot of boats. Well we're not designed, but we created a lot of boats. 50 meters, 70 meters, etc. Mm -hmm. And I think there's no such thing as semi-custom. Okay. Um, I think semi-custom, the reality is when you have a platform, yep. you can put a different superstructure on top of it. 
we did a 50 meter version of that. So that's truly to me semi custom. Okay. Everything else to me is semi production. Okay. Or personalized production. It's true. Okay? Well, I mean, if I'm coming in and I'm, let's say, I'm finding a a flooring that I really want. Would you put That's it in personalization to okay, us? So, okay. Personalization is always available. If you want to change the entire look, you want to have a different mood, which is what we normally do. We do design the boats by mood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's completely up to you. We feel we did the best job that we could with the architecture of the boat. Mm -hmm. So the naval architecture and the, and, the, uh, and the balance of the boat is really, really tied in to the performance of the boat. Got so it. we want to keep that steady. Um, I think that the layout is exactly as optimized as it possibly could be. But as far as how you personalize the boat, that should be entirely a personal experience. Yeah, I agree. Totally. Um, so Fantastic. last and very important, uh, when this is at anchor, how stable is this? When this is at anchor, it's going to be as stable as... I mean, it's heavy. Well, it's kind of difficult to explain because right now we're sitting up in the marina, so we're tied very tight to everything. Right. So it feels very comfortable. Yeah, of course. Seeky for gyros, running the boat at all times. Oh, so there is a Seeky. So Seeky for gyro is going to okay. obviously help out quite a bit with the pitch and roll of the boat. It's going to help out a lot. We have amazingly wide chines. The chines on this boat are about two and a half feet. So wow. the boat itself is sitting on its own kind of pontoons, if you will. Got it. It's going to keep the boat extremely uh, stable. Well, between those two, I feel like that's going to be right. very comfortable. Very comfortable. It's going to be nice. Awesome. We Thanks, Baron. Appreciate it. Oh, the smell of new boat. Yes. <sighs> new yacht. Let's start with yep. the, the midship master. Okay. Okay. Everything's so bright and pretty. Oh, look at this window. It's like a day at the beach. Oh, it's adorable. It's got a luxury feel to it, but at the same it's time, tall. super high look, ceilings. I'm, I'm like, huh? Wow. And it's clean. Yeah, so it's, it's more really of a minimalist beautiful. kind of a Dutch flavor. Oh, this is very, very cool. Yeah, that's super cute. I like, I actually like the wall. Oh, it's really cute. Look at this windows. It just, it feels really fresh. Yes. And well, she just arrived here, I think, a week ago. <laughs> well, there's she that. She is factory fresh. Well, what's going to be nice about it is the, obviously, if this boat is going to be hanging around the Bahamas, is all this light interior is going to reflect the light. So when the boat is in the water, it's going to reflect those beautiful blues, 50 shades of blues, and it's like all this interior. That's what I would choose if I was keeping the boat. I would go light because it just creates these cool colors at sunset. Yeah. It's, it's very, like... it's like its own, it's, it's, it's its own art, you know, palette. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Room. Okay. Forward. Oh, nice. These windows are just gorge. Yeah, they're almost equal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they are equal, right? Kind of feel pretty equal. Oh, I love the windows. So nice. Oh, it's a good amount of storage. We got storage here, mm -hmm. storage here. No, it's very good. And nice size shower. Oh, nice size too. I have really good sized rooms. I know somebody that I think would really like this boat. I mean, I like this boat, but I know someone who can afford it. Guy. Who can afford it. You're like, I got a guy. <laughs> oh, not, wow, this is actually a really nice, um, unexpected head. Really good size. 
I'm gonna get out of your way. Everything is solid. everything is very solid. It's all seamless. the all the doors are really solid. Kind of extra, you know, yeah. Level of yeah. I mean, I, really, I like I like the there. finishes. And the yeah. last state room yeah. will follow. And then we have the twin guests. Oh, cool. Perfect. Yeah. Some twin beds. Also, really good size. Yeah. Okay, Each cool. state room has its own uh, head. Oh there, oh, there is a day head. Quarters. Wow, they look big. Wow, it looks nice. Oh, four people crew. Wow. Four crew with the head. Very cool. And there's a head yeah. here, right? It's Obviously. Head. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, awesome Great amount of space. Really is. All right, let's show this as well. Do you want to get it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every single one has like an actual decent shower. The rest of the cabins had awesome showers. Like big, big pet peeve of mine. I love, love when there's normal. The like that's important. Lady. We can see that window from here. That's kind of something that I always, you know, it's you sit there at anchor and you got this beautiful breeze, but you only get side doors and doesn't come in as nearly as great. But the catamarans now, you know, they all have an um, entrance and the walkway to the front or the window. So this is this is awesome implementation. All right, well, thanks for watching you guys and please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe and really Looking forward to seeing this beauty in the Bahamas. I'm gonna be like, oh, I've been on the boat. <laughs>